Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. The rules for exponents that you learned for integer exponents in Algebra 1 still hold for rational or fractional exponents. Here we're going to be looking at the specific rule for a power to a power. Like if I have x to the n power raised to the m, that's x to the n times m. Let's go ahead and do some examples, assuming all variables are positive so I don't have to worry about absolute value. Okay, in example 1, I could go ahead and do negative 1 7 times each of those exponents. I get the same answer, um, but I'm, I want to simplify the inside. Like the inside, it looks like those variables just are crying out to be subtracted. That would be x to the 3 minus negative 1, um, which of course is, oops, negative 1 7. Sorry, negative 1 7 there. x to the 3 minus negative 1 is x to the 4th to the negative 1 7th power. Multiply those exponents, so I'd have x to the negative 4 7th power. Most of the time you're asked to write your answers with only positive exponents, so what I'm going to do here is turn that into 1 over x to the 4 7th. And you could leave your answer in that form. If your textbook or teacher asked you to write it in radical form, you would make that 1 over the 7th root of x to the 4. Either one of those is fine. Okay, let's look at example 2. Example 2, there's no fraction for me to simplify, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply those exponents. I'll have x to the 1 6 times negative 12 power times y to the negative 4 thirds times 12 power. And then I just need to multiply those exponents. Well, 1 6 of negative 12 is negative 2, and then negative 4 thirds of 12, if you're not sure how to do that, write it out as 12, oops, sorry, negative 12. Um, over 1, and then multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, 48 over 3. So I'll have y to the 48 over 3 power. 48 over 3 reduces to uh, 16, so here I have y to the 16th. And then let's write it as a fraction without any, uh, oops, y to the 16th on top of x to the 2. That doesn't look very good. Let me try it again. y to the 16th on top of x to the 2. That's our answer without any negative exponents. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Again, now I am adding in an integer in example 3, so I'm going to be doing 25 to the 1 half power, 10 to the x to the 10th to the 1 half power, 36 to the 1 half power, and y to the 12th to the 1 12th power. Um, so let's go ahead and try that out. If I have 25 to the 1 half power, that's going to be um, 25 to the 1 half power is 5 x to the 10 times 1 half is going to be x to the 5th. There's my top. Now let's look at the bottom. I have 36 to the 1 half power, which of course is just square root of 36. And then I have y to the 18 times 1 half, so that's y to the 9th. This is my final answer there. There's nothing there that could be simplified any further. I don't have any negative exponents, so I'm done. Okay, example 4 has a division sign and a multiplication sign. So if you're a visual learner, it might help you to rewrite it as a fraction, x to the 7th, 8th, divided by x to the 1 fourth. We'll simplify that first, and whatever our answer is, we'll multiply it by x to the negative 1 half. That's one way to do it. So in my first, in my division sign, I'm going to be subtracting exponents, top exponent minus bottom exponent, 7 eighths minus 1 fourth. And then if I have a multiplication sign going on, then I add those exponents. So it would be plus negative 1 half. Now all I need to do is simplify those fractions. 7 eighths minus 1 fourth plus negative a half. I'm going to turn those all into eighths. 7 eighths, the second fraction, gets multiplied by 2 over 2. And the third fraction gets multiplied by 4 over 4. So I'll have x to the, let's see, 7 minus 2, that's 5. Take away 4 more is 1. x to the 1 eighth power. That's a fine answer, or you could also write that as the eighth root of x to the first. So when you're working with... Uh, Fractional exponents, otherwise called rational exponents, they follow the same rules as do your integer exponents, including the power to power rule. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two um, 
to fix. Yeah.